I'm Casey, and this is 25 in 52. This week was mostly lost to anxiety brain, um, but some stuff did happen. One, my nails are awesome! Uh, two, I have a new theme song, because that's surprising. Uh, Jacob sent me a song this morning, and I was like, this is perfect! So, now I have a new theme song, and I got this camera, which is cool, and I bet the video is a lot better than you're used to it being, huh? So, awesome. Um, coming up this week, we've got my friend Katie's wedding on Saturday, which is cray. Um, this is the first time that I'm going to a friend's wedding, and I'm also in it. So, yeah. I gotta get a pedicure, and I'm walking around my house in heels because I, I gotta make sure that I can walk in the things and that they're comfortable. So that's, you know, coming up. But let's get to why this video is so late today. <laughs> this video is late because yesterday I went home to see my mom for Mother's Day. And then I stayed the night, and then I hung out with my dad all day, so it's been been a big family sort of time. But I have some thoughts about Mother's Day and family and that sort of thing that I want to share with you. So let's get into that, okay? So yesterday, all over the internet, people were talking about their moms and showing pictures of their moms and talking about, you know, what their mom had taught them. And that was really cool. Um, for a variety of reasons. One, I mean, being a mom's not easy. I know that. I just have cats and I know that. And two, because in our society, we don't spend a lot of time talking about the contributions that women have made to our lives. And one thing that was interesting to me, um, my friend Renee, who's a UU minister, had posted something about how everybody talking about their mom reminded her of a ritual she had done in an adult religious education program called Cakes for the Queen of Heaven, where you list as far back as you can the women in your family. So I'm Casey, my mom's Linda, her mom's Mildred, her mom is Myrtle, her mom is Hannah, and I don't know any further than that. And then you say what you learned from those women. And it's part of a longer course on women's history that I, and, um, you know, goddess spirituality that I really would like to do someday, but I don't have time right now. But I spent all day thinking about that curriculum and thinking about the ways in which Mother's Day has this potential to be a really deeply connective women's history sort of moment. And I think, and I've mentioned before in this, that it's really important for women to hold on to our history as women, as a group of people. And so I spent some time hanging out with my mom yesterday and talked to her about some of this, um, which is why I can list those names that far back. And her and I went um, to visit my grandma's grave because, you know, it was mother's. So I was spending yesterday thinking about mothers and spending time with my mother and thinking about women's history and being connected to the women who came before me. And I thought that one thing I would do today is share one of my favorite stories about my grandma. So when she was 28 years old, she had had eight children and she was done. So she went to her doctor to ask him to tie her tubes. And the doctor said, well, no, you know, you're not 30 yet and you might want more. Now, this is embellishment. I don't know what exactly my grandma said, but I imagine she said something to the effect of, I could field a baseball team. I have eight children. What do you think I don't know if I want more for? I don't want any more. So she went home and she altered her birth certificate to make it say that she was 30. And um, then she went to a different doctor and she got her tubes tied. That's true. And that's a piece of my history, and that sort of, you know what, I get to say how many children I have and when I have them and what I do with my body is really deeply part of my history as a woman. And that's pretty awesome. It's easy to think about my grandma's story and be like, oh, well, man, weren't the 1950s funny? But weekly, 
I see women who went to the doctor and said, I want my tubes tied, or had a baby and said, I want my tubes tied when this is over. And the doctor said, well, you're not old enough. You don't know what you want. So they didn't tie their tubes, and now she's pregnant, and she doesn't want another baby, and she can't have another baby, and so she has to have an abortion. And we haven't learned. We haven't learned in all that time that, you know what, women know what they need, and they know how to take care of themselves, and if you give them accurate and appropriate information, they will make the decisions that they need to make that are best for them, best for their families, and we haven't learned. We, you know, we celebrate Mother's Day and we give our moms a card and some flowers and, well, that's all. But that's not enough. Mothers and all women deserve more than lip service. They deserve rights and to be listened to and heard. Because they're people and they're people who, you know what, had a lot to do with most of our lives. So, point number one of this video is listen to women and respect women and families and nurturant parents and respect people. Do it! Point number two of this video is that it's important to think about your history and where you came from, at least sometimes. Um, I think about this a lot lately, just because it's kind of the thing I'm doing right now. and. There's this James Baldwin quote, and it says, We cannot escape our origins, however hard we try. Those origins which contain the key to all that we later become. And, you know, it, it doesn't seem literally true. I'm not my parents, and they're not their parents, and they're not their parents, and so on. But the history of the choices that they make led to the circumstances that I grew up in. And being connected to that is feels powerful to me. Being connected to my grandma who doctored her birth certificate so she could get her tube side is powerful for me. So, I don't know. What's in your family history? What do you have to hold on to that gives you power and strength? I got a lot. I don't know what I'm saying there. Of course. I don't know what I'm saying. What am I... Okay, this little tripod is... <laughs> Not that. I don't know where I'm going with that. Doesn't do you any good to set the thing up if you then move the thing, Casey. Doesn't do you any good at all. Uh, a woman Try named Renee. Renee. Talking?